Lord, your word tells us that you want us all to be one in you. We are here as your family, gathered in different places at different times, able to hear you speaking to us. Father, as we are connected to you and to each other, by your blood and by your spirit, we worship you and we praise you. Thank you, Father, for giving us this wonderful opportunity as we are gathered to hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. In a world where people fight for so many different causes, we thank you, O oh God, that you sent Jesus to bring your, your love to us and to teach us to live together in harmony. We thank you that your love has drawn us here in our different places where we are, able to hear you, able to hear the word of God, able to listen to the word of God, and to offer ourselves back to you. For from you we come. In your name I pray. Amen. I'm going to call Brother Ben to come and do the reading of the word of God. That is coming from the book of John, chapter 17, verses 20 to 26. Praise God, and I hope you're all well this week. Um, we're just so blessed having Johnson here to be able to bring God's word in a clear and concise way and share with us. So I uh, look forward to hearing his word from John chapter 17, verses... Uh, 20 to 26 this week. Uh, it's about Jesus' praise for future believers. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them glory, that you, the glory you have given me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have, I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. This is the word of the Lord, so we'll get Johnson back and yeah, bring open ears. Praise God. Uh, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, here is in the morning. This morning I've decided to share with you on the theme, Jesus prays for all believers. Jesus prays for all believers. Our lesson for the day comes from the Gospel of John. The setting is to Mount Sunday, Thursday. After the symbolic washing of his disciples' feet, Jesus prays what has come to be known as the high priestly prayer. This is rather a lengthy prayer in which Jesus first prays for himself, then for his disciples. In the final portion of his prayer, which begins with this verse, he prays for the future believers. Listen to how this portion of Jesus' rather lengthy prayer begins. My prayer is not for them alone. Here he is referring to his disciples. My prayer is not for them alone. So I pray also for those who believe in me through their message. So that's us who are here today. So Christ is praying for his disciples and is praying for those who will be reached through the disciples' witness. 
We, are, we can easily replace those with our na own names and realize that Jesus had us in mind as he prepared for the cross. You can say Jesus is praying also for me. Johnson is pray praying for me. Ben is praying for me. Philip. You can put your name there and realize that Jesus was praying for you. So if the first generation of Christians who believed in Christ did so through the witness of the apostles, whether directly or indirectly, and that chain of believers continues even this day, Christ prays for all who believe because of the testimony of those first saints, including us today. We are bearing the same testimony. So that's the first insight we find in this lesson. When Jesus prays, he prays for us. You and I are included in his prayer. That should bring us some comfort. The great Scottish preacher, Robert McKin, put it this way. If I could hear Christ praying for me in the next room, I would not fear a million enemies. Yet distance makes no difference. He's praying for you. He's praying for you. What an incredible piece of information that is. Christ prays for us. If you were to turn over to the epistle to the Hebrews, we would learn that Christ is still interceding with the Father on our behalf. We read in chapter 4 of Hebrews, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Which means Christ is praying for us. To me, that is incredible good news. When we bring our request to God, Christ is right alongside with us, interceding in our behalf. So when I am praying, Christ is already interceding with me. So it's not only me praying, Christ is praying for me. That's why we should not fear even our enemies because Christ is praying for us. Fearful, you approach the throne of God. Why fearful? Because you know you are not only, you are not all God means for you to be. You have not married at all to petition to God for his love and mercy. But alongside you is one who is volunteered to stand with you. He has volunteered to stand with you, giving you comfort and confidence. You know, when you are in a situation, it could be grief, it could be anything that you are, you need someone to be with you, just to comfort you. That feeling that someone is closer to you helps you in every way. So Jesus reassures that we can come to God as any child can come to his loving parent. We can pray according to Thomas G. Long, not as out, outsiders, but as God's children. We are children of God, tender, honestly, and confidently loved. In our secret whispered prayers, we are known as so well that God, like a mother, listening with her heart to the children, can finish our sentences. Even sometimes we are unable to utter them. He is able to finish those sentences. Christ prays for us and all who believe on his name. That is the first insight that braces our hearts. He is the second in this passage. He makes a specific request in our behalf. He prays for unity. The second thing, he said he's praying for us so that we, we can become one. And now he's praying for unity. That is where we draw our strength. We are bound together with one another and with him. We are bound together. Listen to his words. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message that all of them may be one. May be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, important ways that all of may be one. All of us may be one. So Jesus' great desire for his disciples as they should become one. 
Think about it. That Christians everywhere, regardless of our denominations, we should be one. He wanted them unified as a powerful witness to the reality of God's love. Unity between believers is not often mentioned as the catalyst for someone becoming a Christian. However, Christian unity does provide an environment for the gospel message to make its clearest impact. And the lack of unity among Christians frequently drives people away. When we lack unity in a church, when the church is fighting, it drives people away. It drives people away. Are you helping to unify the body of Christ, the church? You can pray for other Christians and avoid gossip. Build others up, work together in humility. Give your time and money, exalt Christ, and refuse to get sidetracked by arguing over decisive matters. I have seen a lot of Christians argue for no reason. And those reasons bring disunity. Instead of bringing them together, it's disunity. Pastor and popular author David Jeremiah says that his church once built a ministry upon what they called the triple cord prayer ministry. Take a piece of string and you can snap it with little effort. But entwine it with two other cords and it will withstand all your efforts to break it. So together we are greater than the sum of our past. Together we are a forceful movement. No one can destroy us. This is a golden principle at the very center of how God works in the world, says Jeremiah. He works through people intertwined together, even with all the messiness and entanglements of our being involved together. Alone we are so limited. Together we can forge movements that change the world history. I like what he said. This is really powerful. A pastor one evening was having dinner in a restaurant and he happened to sit next to a young couple. He began to talk with them about their religious experience and how they felt about religion. They were a deeply committed young couple. They loved the Lord very much. They were Roman Catholic and talked about their concern for Christian unity and how in Jesus Christ all of us have been made one. Sometimes we talk about our differences more than we talk about the unit, things that unite us. What are the things that unite us as Christians? Not the things that divide us. The woman reached into a purse and took out a card while they were talking. She said that it was a portrait of Jesus that illustrated the meaning of Christian unit in a powerful way. Her card was very wrinkled. Obviously, she had it for a long time and had looked at it at a great deal. As you looked at this picture at arm's length, you could see an ordinary picture of Jesus. But if you held it up closely, you could see that this portrait of Jesus was composed of 48 different faces. And there were all kinds of people. They were young, old, black, brown, yellow, white, male, female, all kinds of human expression were right there in that painting. Isn't that magnificent? Just knowing that we are all one in Christ. All one in Christ. One Lord. In praying for us, not only did Christ carry us in his heart before the Father, but he makes some special requests. The first of this is for our unity. A divided church in many ways is a scandalous affront to the uniting work that Jesus did on the Calvary by bringing us into relationship with God the Father and ultimately bringing us into relationship with each other. So what does this mean? That is why we are known as the body of Christ. Christians are the body of Christ. The unit that he desires for his church is the same kind of unit he has with the Father. The real church is a body of men and women united to each other because they are united to Christ. We are all united to Christ. When we demonstrate this oneness, we will convince the world that the Father sent his Son and that the Father loves believers deeply and eternally, just as he loves the Son. 
Listen again to his words. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me, I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Hallelujah. That the world may believe. So when we are fighting, the world is not understanding who we are. We need to unite. We need to stand together as Christians. We need to unite. Here's the third insight that we gleaned from this passage. And this is what he said. Our unity as the body of Christ is our primary witness to the world, to the truth of Christ. May they also be in us. Jesus prayed so that the world may believe that he has sent me. Do you remember the song which was composed by Peter Scholes? It went like this. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that the unity may one day be restored. Particularly the chorus. And they will know that we are Christians by our love. By our love. Yes, they will know we are Christians by our love. People will start to know that we are Christians the way we love each other. The way we talk about each other. The content of this little song comes directly from this prayer by Jesus. If you want to witness for Christ, the first thing you need to do is to love your brother and sister in Christ. We are a family. We are his family. And Christ is the head of our family. We are in him as he is in the Father. Christ is the head of the family. He is the head of the church. The church belongs to Christ. So we belong to him. There is no need for fighting over trivial things. We need to unite as Christians. We need to love one another. Where is gossip coming from? Where is all these thoughts of divide, which divide the church, which divide the body of Christ coming from? If we are one in Christ, there is no need of all these things. He gave his life for the express purpose of bringing into being the group of people. On the night before he was crucified, Christ prayed for us. He prayed that we might be unified as his body. This is where we draw our strength during times of need. And that is our best way of witnessing to the truth that Christ is alive and is at work in the world. And that is what we preach. We are one in spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all units may one day be restored. They will know we are Christians by our love. They will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. And that is true. People will know that we are Christians by our love. In conclusion, Christian unit begins in the heart of an individual believer. Do you love others? Do you want others just as you love yourself? Or do you think yourself better than others? Days are gone when people talk about how best their denomination is. We are one in Christ. There is no best Christians. The only Christians which are needed are the righteous Christians, those who love others. Are we willing to be unified with others? We may be completely different from us than the fact that we both follow Jesus Christ. Yes, the way they do things is totally different from ours, but we are together. We are one in Christ. If believers would manifest that union to the world, the world would be more impressed with Christ. Too often the world sees believers hating each other, which may well be one of the reasons they will not accept Christ. Because they have witnessed hate in us. We preach hate instead of love. What we need to preach is the gospel of love and not hate. May the good Lord help us as believers just to know that we have been mandated to preach the love of God and unite everyone on the foot of Christ. 
on the foot of the cross. That is where our love begins. May the Lord bless you from now and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we can only be connected to you, Father, when we are prepared to be open, to give ourselves, to admit that sometimes we feel that our connection with you and with each other breaks down. We hold ourselves back through fear, through mistrust, even through selfishness. Now we ask you to forgive us and come before you with our open hearts, ready both to give and to receive forgiveness. Sometimes, Lord, we see praying for people as a duty, not a joy. Then we read your word and see how you prayed to the Father. <clears throat> not only for us, but for those who read through your word. That gives us new life to our prayers. Lord, we thank you this morning that we are here as your family, gathered in different places at different times. We thank you for the connection we feel with each other and with you. We pray for any who feel on the outside that will welcome them in. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of praying for others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I do urge you again, wherever you are, after listening to this word, just now know that the church is one. So wherever you are, after listening to the message, what you are doing, when you are contributing to the offering, you are con contributing to the work of God. You are not giving to a particular denomination, you are contributing to the work of God. Thank you. Wherever you are, we are already thanking you as you are giving your offering to the work of God. It's time for you now to take your offering and we we'll pray for it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful gift of thanksgiving. Knowing that we realize that our life belongs to you. And we are being reminded every week, every Sunday, that everything that we have comes from you. And it is the reason why we give our thanksgiving. Just to remind us that we belong to you. Bless this offering, Father, as we continue to worship you as the children are giving this offering from different places, wherever they are. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us receive grace. Loving God, together this morning, we have been blessed and strengthened in our connection, not only with each other, but also with you. Send us out now in your name and in your power to continue to live lives that are pleasing to you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. We'll see you and meet you next week. Amen.